The Arizona Supreme Court uh, the other day uh, made a decision that many people uh, anticipated was coming, and that was that a recent law that was written and the way it was written, that if Roe v. Wade were to be overturned, we would default back to an 1864 territorial law, and that is exactly how they ruled, and that's exactly what will happen after this time has ended. And we have had a lot of our leaders, elected leaders and others, speaking out very passionately, none more passionately than our Attorney General Chris May. She joins us now. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me back. Uh, Let me ask you the question I asked uh, Senate President Warren Peterson. I asked Congressman Greg Stanton, and both of them said yes, that in legal terms, did the Arizona Supreme Court make the right legal decision when they made the decision they made? Yeah, no, I think they made the wrong decision, and that's why we argued, and and I sent uh, the best lawyers in the state of Arizona from our Solicitor General's office up to the Supreme Court to argue that they should have um, favored the 15-week ban because it was the most recent ban enacted by the legislature, and that's how you do statutory construction. Um, I frankly was shocked at this decision. I guess there's other people who, who, who weren't. But I'm really shocked that the Supreme Court decided this way and also has plunged Arizona back to an 1864 near total abortion ban. And I think this is a a seismic decision and probably not in the way that Republicans or what I'll call extreme Republicans anticipated. I think they're going to see this play out in a way that um, that they didn't understand was going to happen. But uh, especially in November. But no, I, I don't think the Supreme Court, Court got it right. And I'll tell you this, Mike, we are going to fight this decision. This is not over, not by a long shot. And we're going to, my office is now assessing our options. We'll have more to say about this next week, but we do believe there are additional legal avenues that we can take to try to make sure that this 1864 ban is never actually enacted. Can you give us um, some of those options that you're contemplating? Can you describe some of those options you're contemplating? Yeah, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to necessarily, you know, say, you know, tip my hand entirely, Mike. But look, we can we can appeal this to the United States Supreme Court um, based on some of the, the the predicates and reasoning of the of the Arizona Supreme Court's 1864 decision. We can. They also left the door open for us to take this back down to the trial court level to. Uh, go over and, and address some of the constitutional issues that, that, that were not addressed in this. I mean, Mike, you, you know, I've been talking to you for a long time about the fact that I think this 1864 ban and the 15-week ban violates Arizona's right to privacy, which is an express right to privacy in our Constitution. Not every state constitution has that in it. So I think there's still more for us to do. But look, I'm worried Arizona women and men, I think, are worried about what are, what will happen in 60 days. And so while the legal uh, issues play out, we are developing a plan for how, how to help women and doctors make it to other states, get to other states like California and Nevada uh, to, for reproductive care. I mean, this is we're, I believe this decision by the Supreme Court could get women killed. And it's not a hypothetical. This has happened in other states. Women have complications in their pregnancies. We know that. And a near total ban will put women in danger of dying if something happens at two weeks, at six weeks, at 16 weeks. And that's, I think, we have to keep that front and center in our minds. So I, I know that there are other issues beside the life and, and the safety of the mother, but isn't there in that 1864 law, which I agree with you, we should not be reverting back to territorial days, but in that it does make exceptions for the health and the life of the mother. Do you believe that in that situation, specifically on the health of the mother, that it's still insufficient? Yeah, I mean, because, Mike, think about it. Put yourself into the position of an emergency room doctor who has a woman come in, and come in, a pregnant woman comes in at four weeks or six weeks, and she's, she's in crisis. She has an apoptic pregnancy um, or some other issue uh, occurring, and it's 
an emergency, but that doctor uh, is put in the position of having to decide whether or not her life is in danger. So what is, is that doctor supposed to do? Send her back out to the parking lot until she's absolutely at doors at the death of uh, at the door of death i mean it's an insane situation and position to put our doctors and nurses and medical professionals and women in um and so that's that's why i'm working so hard and fighting so hard mike to make sure that this ban doesn't go into place if the state legislature uh, I, again i'm asking you hypotheticals but i'm just trying to find the mindset of the fight and just kind of be clear with it if, if sure. the state legislature puts together the exact same 15 weeks you fought for without the exclusion that got this put back or the caveat, whatever you want to call it, that sent this back to 1864, if they took that part of this law out, they were the pass it and the governor signed it, would you be satisfied with that and would the fight be over? With the 15-week ban? Yes. That, um, ha- yeah. That, well, look, I mean, I, yeah, I think the fight would be over until – the ballot initiative right. certainly but yeah. i mean your I mean, legal it, battle your legal battle yeah i mean i i think it, it yeah sure because you know we were we were obviously we were making the the argument now don't get me wrong and mike you know this i don't like that 15 week ban either because it has no exceptions for rape or incest but the fight but we were arguing in front of the arizona supreme court that that ban the 15 week ban should be left in place and then ultimately the people of Arizona are going to have the final say over this in the form of the ballot initiative, which I think is going to pass. I think it's definitely going to pass now, um, given that what the Arizona Supreme Court just did to the women and men of Arizona. Uh, but I think, you know, we, we now have this period of time between now and November where women's lives have been put in danger. So then the statement you made about as long as that I am an attorney general, and I have the quote in front of me that we will not enforce this law, is are you concerned about the the oath of office and picking and choosing what what laws you will enforce and will not enforce? No, because I think prosecutors, Mike, have always had prosecutorial discretion. I mean, and Mm -hmm. I'll give you a couple examples. We have an adultery law still on the books, but we don't prosecute men and women who cheat on each other's spouses. <laughs> that would be right? that would, you would be tying up a lot of courtrooms. Right. I'm not going to go out and prosecute uh, adultery. We also have a bigamy law on the books, and we're not prosecuting bigamy. And we've got big issues to deal with in the state of Arizona. I'm trying to fight the Mexican drug cartels and, and who are bringing fentanyl across our border at record and alarming rates. I'm trying to uh, prosecute elder abuse in a state with a growing uh, 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 elderly community. I'm trying to protect our water supplies and prevent the Saudis from taking all the water out of La Paz County. I don't think that my resources and my lawyers in the Arizona Attorney General's office should be spending their time prosecuting doctors, nurses, and pharmacists for helping a woman uh, access reproductive care and abortion. Uh, Attorney General Chris Mays is joining us. So uh, the the county attorney in Maricopa County, obviously Arizona's largest county, said that she would not be prosecuting cases that involve molestation, incest, rape. And but she also pointed out that as long as she has been in in Maricopa County and and working in this capacity and in that office, there has never been an abortion case that has been brought to that office for prosecution. In other words, saying that this would be very, very rare. And so with that in mind, do you believe that this would lead to more prosecutions as this law stands? And would can should we avoid the prosecutions with this 15 week ban law? Yeah, it's a really interesting uh, point. And I think it is, you know, obviously, you know, what I what, what I will tell you this, Mike, what I have heard from prosecutors privately, they will tell you privately behind closed doors that they don't want to prosecute these cases. They don't have any intention of prosecuting these cases. But not every prosecutor has gone on the record to say that. So Dennis McGrain up in Yavapai County has not said that he wouldn't prosecute under this 1864 ban. In fact, he seems to be uh, in some ways eager to do that. Um, and, he's, and in the positions he's taken in court, Rachel Mitchell herself did not say in that statement you just read 
that she wouldn't prosecute doctors or nurses under this 1864 ban. So, you know, they, they have not all been clear. And what the, what the practical impact of that is, is that doctors and nurses will be chilled. They won't know whether or not a prosecutor is going to try to haul them into court and put them in jail for two to five years for a felony, Mike. That is what this 1864 abortion ban would do to a doctor. What doctor is going to risk going to prison and losing his or her license um, when, you know, with this ban in place and when you have prosecutors, county prosecutors who are being clear as mud about what they will do. So that's why I'm also saying I will use my supervisory authority as attorney general to try to ensure that they don't prosecute, that county attorneys don't prosecute. Again, it's not something that has been done very often, but I am willing to to trigger that provision to pri- try to pr- protect Arizona doctors, nurses, and, and women uh, from this hideous, atrocious uh, abortion ban that I think is an affront to, to the freedom of every Arizonan. Well, I always appreciate your candor and your willingness to talk to the audience, and, and I hope that you'll come back as this moves forward and whatever resolution we come to, I would love to talk with you again about the topic. Always, Mike. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. That is Chris Mays, the Arizona Attorney General, uh, impassioned about this issue. We'll be talking a lot more about this in the days to come. Thanks for watching The Mike Broomhead Show. Tap to watch the first season of Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast. You can also click the button in the middle to subscribe.